the Lotmax Shark V2. It's a shark with, wait, 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 no, hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. I got something for this. I used electro blocks to build this. All right, let's try it out. The Lotmax Shark V2. It's a shark with a freaking laser on it. <laughs> and I mean, that's a funny reference to be sure. And when I made my print block beast, when I made the shark, I put a freaking laser on it because yeah, it's a funny reference. But the thing about that is, the shark with a freaking laser on it was a bad idea, right? So is this like that shark with a freaking laser on it? <sighs> Where to begin with this machine? Well, maybe I should start at the very beginning. I hear that's a very good place to start. <laughs> Come on, it's an old reference, but it checks out. <laughs> all right, all right, let's put that away for a little while. So even before I had turned on this machine, I had some serious concerns. For instance, the feed motors. This is a dual material system that both feed into the same nozzle, and there's really nothing wrong with that, but one of the feed motors is on the X gantry, and the other feed motor is attached to the top bar. Now, I'm not an engineer, but wouldn't it make sense to just mirror what you're doing on one side and on the other. The result of this strange sort of doing it two different ways is that one of these filament holders is nice and pretty with their logo on it, but the other one couldn't be because the feed motor was in the way of it. At what point did they think that that was okay? Now I'm putting this together at the maker space and one of the patrons there, a young man who frequently comes in says, it looks like they speed ran the engineering process. And I went, oh, I'm stealing that line. And I stole that line. <laughs> but that's not the only thing that gave me pause for concern. For instance, there is no wire management, not even spoken of in the manual. It says hook it up this way, but then it doesn't say what to do with the wires to keep them out of the way. But you know what it does say in this manual? By default, we flash bicolor printing, so make sure the second extruder has filament running through when print in single color. Now to be clear, the Changlish isn't the problem here. The problem is they're saying, even if you print with a single color, the way your machine is set up, you need to stick filament through the filament detector, the secondary one, even if you're not printing with it, or the machine will fail. Yeah. Now I hear that they have a new firmware that actually addresses that issue. So I guess good, but they sent this out the door. In fact, this is the shark V2. I can't even imagine what the V1 was like if they're shipping this, if they're shipping this out the door like this and calling it a complete project. This was the do-over and this is what we're getting? My mind boggles. But I'm going to persist with this machine. So I turn it on and I try to decide which one of the test G codes that they put on the SD card I'm going to start out with. Now, the funny thing is though, I oftentimes will take those test G codes and look at them in a G code preview so that I can see what they're going to be and decide which one I want. And every single one of them was single color only. Does that mean that they don't trust the dual color printing capability in this? You know, I've used 3D printers in the past that tried to put two filaments into a single nozzle and most of them, most of them don't work very well. And is that gonna be the case with this one? Well, I decide to forego all of the test G codes and instead I'm gonna test this functionality and see what happens when I try to print in dual color. I took the infinity cube model and broke it into a dual color model. Now I should mention that the slicer that they give you on this doesn't make that easy to do because it's just an old version of Cura that they've rebranded as usual, though it does seem to have some additional stuff in it for the dual colors because it actually was kind of working, which kind of surprised me. Now that particular print, I started late in the day, so I went to bed, came back the next day, and it had not 
finished. Looking at the LCD screen, it told me that it was out of filament, or rather that the filament detector had gone off. And I was looking at the filament detector. First one, fine. Second one was reporting that there was no filament in it, even though it had filament in it. It was a false positive, and because of that, the print had stopped. So there's a problem with this filament out detector. Chances are I just need to open it up and bend the clip just a little bit and make sure that it comes in better contact. But, whew, not a good sign. Still, I wiggled the filament around until it turned off the alert and then hit go on the print and it finished up with at least two more false positives on the way up, but I was there to wiggle the filament at the time. Well, maybe I should give the laser a try. It doesn't need the filament out detectors at all. So I switch over to the laser. The process of changing to the laser is involved. Unscrew two screws, move the extruder head to the top and screw it in, screw in the laser with two screws, then plug in this box into the front of the 3D printer. This box with exposed leads. Again, let me read you a selection from the manual. Please be sure that the screw hole it positioned on top so that it can attach to the Y-axis failure to do so will destroy the 3D printer. Again, the Changlish isn't the problem. The problem is that they shipped this 3D printer knowing that it would be so easy to just bend the leads if you misalign stuff that you could destroy your 3D printer. They said, yes, this is a product we want to put into people's hands. But okay, I get the laser up and I have to use their software because there are no test laser cuts on the SD card. So I load up this software and oh, this software. Okay, first of all, on the left, it's got a picture of your build area measured in inches. But on the right, the measurements are done in millimeters. Across the top, this software has four ways to add things to your laser cut scene. There's the black and white option, there's the grayscale option, there's the vector option, and there's the text. So I started by importing a image of my cartoon self and my logo, and I ran the laser cutter, and the result was not good. Nailed it. Uh, turns out I had skipped a step. I needed to focus the laser. I needed to move the Z up and down until the laser made a perfectly sized little hole when you just kind of like quickly double tap it. The manual doesn't say how to focus it, it just says to focus it. I just kind of quickly shot the laser a couple of times until I was pleased with how well it was making the mark on there. And once I had it focused, the result was much better. Text works the way that you would expect it to, but what about vector? Does that mean that this machine can cut? On most laser cutters, the vector option is a sustained blast of the laser's power, and if you move it slow enough, it will sometimes cut all the way through your material. Now, I'm not expecting this laser to be able to cut through thick hardwood or even acrylic, but I should be able to cut through cardboard, right? So I open up the vector option, and the only things it will let me import are bitmaps, PNGs and JPEGs. Those are not vector formats. Why, what is it doing with vectoring JPEG, bitmaps, or PNGs? I'm kind of confused at this point. My first theory is that maybe it's taking a black and white image and tracing around the outside edge of it. So I bring in a black and white image of my logo and it comes in with nothing. And at first I'm thinking, well, clearly I did something wrong. And I did, because this particular black and white image wasn't black and white, it was black and transparent background. And to this software, transparent is black, so it was black on black, so it didn't trace anything. Of course, it should have been white on transparent, because everybody does white on transparent backgrounds. <laughs> fine, fine, I've got a black and white one. Black, white background, sure enough, it brings it in and it traces around the outside edge of it. So I start what I think is going to be a cut, and it's very clearly just etching, but it's etching really badly. 
it's going back and forth, but it's, it's only hitting the lines that are more or less horizontal. And I'm starting to wonder about this. Sure enough, when it finishes the one etch, it starts going up and down and etching the lines that are vertical. And even this, as I'm going through, I'm like, it looks like it's missing parts. And sure enough, as soon as it finishes the vertical etch, it goes diagonal one way and diagonal the other way, catching all the lines that are more or less going those diagonals. And when it finishes, sure, the result doesn't look bad for an etch, but think about what it did here. It started with a black and white image. It figured out the line that went around the outside of that. It figured out the angle that that line is traveling as it goes around the outside of it. And then instead of following that line, it just etched each of those lines at different passes. Why? What benefit does this have over just etching it. Either way, this machine isn't going to be cutting through anything. It is only for etching. You know, they did give us these really cool little glasses to go with it that you know, they don't quite fit on my head, but they really do trippy things to the world when you look through them. Holy smokes! Actually, now that I'm looking at it in this light, this is an amazing machine. I mean, holy, this could give Prusa a run for their money. I didn't really mention it, but the user interface on this thing is pretty darn good. It's got this kind of neat little little screen that comes off full color touchscreen, and, and that's kind of fun. And when you think about it, being able to cut through things would be a problem if they didn't give you something to protect your bed with. Otherwise, you're going to end up depositing material on the metal bed, and, and that's just going to make it so that you can't be level when you do your 3D print, so it's probably good that it doesn't. Oh, and can I mention kudos to LotMax for including everything that you need to get started and try out what this machine can do in the box. Two colors of filament, a couple of pieces of the wood for you to laser etch on. I mean, that... Some people don't do that. That is fantastic. Yes, way to go. And you know, I will say, once you get this set up, plugged in properly, it's really neat that it automatically detects that you've got the laser up and running and it just changes the user interface and it's good to go on it automatically. I mean, there are some things on this machine that really aren't done terribly. It's just that, oh, oh rose-colored glasses. Alright, joking aside, I have used 3D printers like this in the past that are trying to combine multiple functionalities and really there's no reason why a 3D printer and a laser cutter and even a CNC machine couldn't be theoretically combined. They're all essentially doing the same thing with different tool heads. But those machines that I've used in the past, I haven't hardly had any success with. With this one, I'm actually getting 3D prints out of it. I'm actually doing laser etching with it. It's actually, to some degree, more than anything I've used in the past, working. It's not great, but it does do the job. Now, I wanted to finish up with one more very interesting idea. I took a 3D print and I laser etched on it a pattern. This allows you to get more detail than the 3D printer can do when you work with the laser, but also it enables you to like mass produce the 3D printed parts, but then just quickly laser on the details afterwards. And it did work. The laser was powerful enough to etch the PLA. Actually, I've never seen PLA go black like that, but you know what? It worked and it was a neat project that you couldn't do on a normal 3D printer. So this has possibilities, this has capabilities. And despite the fact that it very clearly was a rush job for the engineering, what they put out, I can't deny, actually works. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. 
Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description, and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon, which you can check out here, and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you. And see you next time. <laughs>